Dog, what up? If that's the real Lance, what up? Salute. Oh, there he is. What up, Lance? Salute, brother. Hey, yo, what do you say? What do you know? Hey. It's your boy Blue Eyes ready, set, let's go. AZ Rutch in New Age plug. Ronnie Blue Eyes YouTube Streets podcast. We got Bobby Dilla tonight, the hot throb villa tonight. Hey, make sure y'all go show Lance off the yard some love. Give him, a, give him a like, follow, you know, do all that good stuff. Share his videos. He's got some good stories. He's been doing a lot of content. Glad so is. make sure you get at him, let him and, and show him that support. Hell yeah, salute. But yes, Let's tonight go. we have the Bobby Dylan. <laughs> the only one the in one real in life. <laughs> the other one is in uh is from a movie, but <laughs> <laughs> And is a musician as well, I'm pretty sure. And her name is Jen. It's kind yeah. of funny, though. Yeah. Salute. Hell yeah. Jenai. Jenai. <laughs> Jenai. Jenai. But, uh, yeah, so we got a lot to cover tonight. We got a lot we're going to be talking about. Um, stay tuned towards the end uh, for the Super Chat questions. Just a heads up. Uh, you still got to keep them respectful. You know what I mean? So I don't want you to send a super chat for a question and then it not get uh, answered. You know what I mean? Obviously, if it's disrespectful and and too crazy, we're not going to do all that. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, but I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people that are going to want to know uh, some stuff later on. So, mm -hmm. you know, stay tuned for that. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, this might be a little bit of a long one. I'm not too sure. Pause. Let's go ahead and I'll get, get comfy. Pause again. <laughs> Did it pause? No, no, no. I'm saying you oh. said we're going to have it's a long pre one. your pre-rolls. I got three-rolled. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. man. Let's, hey, let's start. Hey, dude, I always try to start from the beginning. I don't know about you, AZ, but you want to start from the beginning? Definitely. Jim? Yeah, where, definitely, uh, definitely. Where was you born? Uh, Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Yeah. All right. All right. And, uh, you grew up in Brooklyn? I grew up all over. Like, uh, my parents got divorced, so half was in Brooklyn, half was in Jersey. Oh, that's interesting because uh, don't like Jersey and people like from New York kind of like have like a weird feud with each other. They do, but I feel like everyone from New York New York eventually moves to Jersey. It's just like a thing. Yeah. Oh, really? Okay. Yes, yeah, because you want to see trees and like kids have a playground. It's to play like on. Boston's Rhode Island, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I get it. Interesting. Yeah, very close. I, I noticed that living up here, uh, living up there when I was up there that, yeah, a lot of people would move. A lot of people in the city would move to Pennsylvania or Jersey. You know, mm -hmm. to get out to the country to the sticks, they would call that the sticks. So, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. So, how about school? <laughs> like, like, what school did you go to? Like, elementary, middle school, high school? Uh, all different parts of Jersey, and then I went to college in Jersey, and then I went to college. I went to college everywhere I've ever lived. It's like I went to college in Colorado and Nevada, in California, back in Jersey. Like, I always stay in school to just stay my education going. Okay, so, I mean, with that being said, you know what I mean, like, give us, like, a, like, because the, the reason why I'm going to get into this is because later on, when we discuss the path you, you ended up taking, mm -hmm. um, can you give us, like, a, like, a brief background of what your childhood was like? Like, what kind, did you have, like, traumatic experiences that might have led up to that? Did you have just, you know, a good childhood? Like, I had a good childhood. I just made bad decisions all the time. Yeah, you know I, mean? so. I was like, I was kind of like a nerd. I was definitely like a type A personality, like whatever the teacher said I would do. I was like on a roll, you know, gifted and talented, like any AP classes, I would be in AP classes. But at the same time, I'd be like selling weed, you know, like in high school, you know, like middle school, like, uh, you know. Oh, yeah. So yeah. I was like, that's cool. Like I can do all these classes, but I just really like weed. So you got into that early. Yeah, early. But All I also right. lived in like on the border of a bad neighborhood where it was like we were the rich side, but all the poor kids would come over. So like there'd be hella fights, like there'd be gang initiations and shit in my middle school. And like you'd have to worry about drive-bys and like I went to a friend's party when I was like 13 
and uh, a cop killed somebody in front of us. Oh, wow. Hey, walk us through that. Damn. So we were at like a, a Ukrainian Orthodox church and we're just having a party there because she was from Ukraine. And it's like, you know, cake, a trampoline, like, you know, nothing crazy. And we go outside on the trampoline and you just hear pop, 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 pop. And it was a standoff. And then everyone's parents had to come pick them up. But it was like a standoff between a cop and a civilian, which was gang related. But they both shot each other. So it was homicide, suicide by cop, they called it. And I was like, how are you going to call it suicide by cop? Suicide is yourself. Yeah, they uh, to- I mean, well, some people do it like, yeah. like there's dudes that if they don't want to go back to prison, they they'll intentionally to do yeah. something to a cop knowing that the cop is going to have to kill them. Yeah, they yeah. give them no option, basically. Right. It's, yeah. It's, it's in a poor choice of words, but yeah. It was just crazy that I was like at that age and I'm just like, you know, we hit the ground. We all knew, you know, we'd been through that kind of thing before. So just hit the ground, duck and cover. But I'm like, how are they going to later call it suicide by cop? Because, you know, at 13, I'm like, suicide is yourself. Like, that don't make sense. And I just always question things because I was very smart. And I was like, that just don't make sense to me. And I wasn't really a big fan of the police, but I have police in my family. So. uh, So you've seen that at 13 years old? Yeah. That must have been traumatic. Yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah. definitely that's wild. You just knock it off the cuff, you know, and shit like that happens. You're like, oh, all right, what? Still, if- you you think it's normal at the time? Yeah, yeah, and especially like when my parents grew up in Brooklyn, like it was a rough area. So yeah. it's like I had it better off because I only saw one rather than you know five bodies. Right. Mm-hmm. All right, and, and give people an idea real quick. Uh, how old are you? I'm 30 now. So I joined the industry okay. when I was like 22, 23, and I was playing 18 years old. So most people think I'm about four years younger than I really am, which isn't bad because that means that I can look it and pass it. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, they say I look young too. I mean, <laughs> that's always a good thing. You want to really. no one wants to say you look old. <laughs> Except when he go, he don't got his ID and he wants his black and miles or his blunts. He sold yeah. it. <laughs> so do you have a do you have a first memory? I just remember like one of my first memories is like eating a ramen noodle off the ground. Do you have like a <laughs> first memory? Um, my first memory was when I I used to roll around in a doll stroller because I was always really I was like big for my age, so I'd walk around in a stroller and like probably three or four years old. And we had like a, a step, a step down into the living room, and I bust my jaw on the step down, and there were carpenters' nails underneath. So I just remember rolling around in this stroller, and I don't remember hitting it. But then I remember like people telling me the story, like, "Yeah, you got stitches. You had to be in two straight jackets. Like you kept getting out of the straight jackets, and you were like wringing around." Okay. Okay. Crazy. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that started early. So you started early on. Yeah, again, sometimes we don't jacket. know how much it affects us till later, but go ahead. That's facts, so Ronnie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, definitely. You know, plug, you know. Yeah, because think about it, internalize. It's like, in two, what's it called? Institutional, institutional, in, what do you call it? Like, Institu- Institutionalized? Maybe, maybe that's not what I'm looking for. Well, I thought that's the word streets. you were trying to say. Maybe I grew not, up in the not, fucking but... projects and shit was fucked up, but it was normal to me at the time. It was right. normal. It was normal to everyone in the neighborhood. To not have a father, this, that, to be put, whatever, you know. Right. But yeah. when you oh, step out that? and was get a different it? perspective, you realize that it ain't normal. Or when you grow older, you have kids of your own, whatever it takes. Yeah. How about the dad? Was was daddy there for you? Um, yeah, I mean, it was on and off. Like, you know, he was well, he's like a workaholic. So now that I'm older, I see that he had to work to provide. But when you're a kid, you're like, you didn't show up. You're an asshole. You know, but when you're older, right. you're like, damn, you got to afford child support. You got to afford, you know, the yeah. payments. You got to afford the bills. Like Perspective. Yeah, yep. you definitely, like, we have a great relationship now. And, like, Good. I have a daughter. So he's, like, everything that he missed out with me, he makes up with my daughter. That's oh, that's, that's cool, though. That works. That's a great thing, you know. And, yeah. um. Sometimes, like when you can't mend something, but you could be there. You can't. It's it's giving them a grandfather at the same time. So it's being selfless. Mm-hmm. It's a great thing. For as sure. a as a as a, a father of a daughter, 
I got to ask you, like, what was your, does your dad know about all the. Yeah. He ended up finding out like towards the end of the industry when I was in and I'm just mm-hmm. like, damn, I thought I kept my shit so hidden. Like I thought I was sneaky, sneaky. Right. What was his, uh, what was his reaction? I mean, he didn't have to say it. He was obviously disappointed. And, like, right. you're so smart. You went to college. You had every opportunity. Like, <clears throat> sorry, I'm sick, so <clears throat> getting my voice back. Bless. Um, You had every opportunity, so, like, why would you have to do this shit? And I'm like, because I like to bend the rules. I like to break the rules. I like to see how far I can go. You know, I wanted to see the world. I wanted to make a fuck ton of money really quickly, really easily. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, I didn't want to go to jail because I knew when I was in college, if I sold weed, that shit was a felony back then. Yeah. So if I would have got caught with weed, that's a felony and I can't get any more student loans yeah, or, right. you know, financial aid. Yeah. But if I go the porn route, I can make a bunch of money, pay off college, buy a house, and nobody can charge me with shit. Okay. I get because uh, yeah. I don't know. I think I would be pretty upset. Only yeah. You know, like... There's a lot of things, you know what I mean? Like as a as a dad, I would be a I, I would be upset. Yeah. And then I not only that, but but now you've ruined porn for the poor guy. I know my whole family, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll go back into the early stages and like, you know, what you've been through, what you experienced, but what was your exit strategy? We just, you know, why'd you get out? Um, I ended up getting out because of like there was a bunch of sex trafficking, human trafficking. Right. Like you see the nitty gritty and like right. evil side of it. And you agree to do so much. So for you to try to push me to do more and more and more yeah. and like try to break my consent and try to just not you make me feel good. Perspective. Exactly. So it's like, um, there were just a bunch of like pimping and shit like that. And it's like people think and talk about pimping, but until they lived in that life and yeah. have been through it, they don't know that, like, it's not cool to be a pimp. It's not a good thing to be a pimp. Yeah. No. There's, there's people I, I doing, can, I can agree. doing security, and then there's people straight up gorilla pimping and trafficking. So there's all kinds of, mm-hmm. you know, there's different kinds of, but there's definitely levels to that shit where it's just barbaric, you know? Yeah, exactly. All right. So before we get towards that part of it, because it's right. kind of like the end it's almost. Backwards. Yeah, no. Let's 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 jump back. So, what came first, the uh, the the stripping, the the escorting, or the or the Pornhub, or was it kind of like all mixed in? It was porn first. I went and joined porn. I was like, I was on some um, fetish website, and I was like, okay, like dancing. Yeah, I know. I was I was a fucked up way. I definitely did not do it the right way. If I would have known better, I would have just been a dancer my whole life. Well, you live and you learn. Go ahead. Yeah. So I did the industry because I was already like taking nude photos and putting them online myself and like recording myself and doing stuff like that. Hey, but and before I, that, before that, when did you lose your when did you lose your virginity? I think that's important though. I was sixteen. I was kind of a late bird. Okay. Now go ahead. Proceed. But, um, yeah, so I went into porn, then I went into stripping, and then I went into, they, like, trick you into escorting. Because when you say no, they're like, okay, we'll just come back with a better number. And you're like, no, I'm good. Like, I just want to do this legally. It's protected. It's covered under the law. Then they trick you, like, you're going to do a shoot for, um, you know, new sensations. And it's really an old dude with a camera. Right. And you're like, oh, wow, fuckers. Like, yeah, they they trick your ass into it. Like, literally, like, you're you're stuck in a room. There's a dude with the camera. You think that you're filming for a company that's like, okay, a stepdad scene or a, you know, creepy old dude scene, whatever, because they do do those. But you don't realize that the video never comes out. You're like, why did the video never come out? Oh, that's crazy. Did you enjoy it at that point? Or did you enjoy dancing more? Um, I enjoy dancing always because it's a good workout. I liked doing the pole. I liked yeah. um, talking to people. But in dancing, they try to get you addicted to coke. They try to get you on blow. They try to get you on liquor. They want you to be like stuck in that lifestyle. And I was yeah. like, no, I'm saving money. I'm trying to be a homeowner. I'm trying to finish this college degree with no debt. Again, trying to get you in the trap. Yep. All right. Dang. Dang. Well... 
Daisy, you next. Go ahead. Oh, all right. Um, <laughs> uh, the rotation. Yeah, no, no, no. That's that. That's good. So you started out, you know, with that. What was your if you if you could pick one? What was your most prolific video? I know that you had said one in the last one, and the chats kind of went a little crazy. Uh, but I don't know. That might not be your most prolific one. But if it was or whatever it was, let us know. Um, I don't know. I wouldn't say that any of them were like prolific. There was one that I did that was very um, thought provoking. Like it was about her. A, a porn performer wrote it, and it was about her childhood and her trauma. So she was like living out her trauma to heal herself. And um, I played her as like a younger girl. And um, I thought that was pretty prolific because she was like helping heal herself through this. But I don't know if it was more like they were exploiting her or if it was healing her. Right. And then what was your, what do you think, what was your most popular video? I have no idea. You'd have to ask the crowd. <laughs> no, I don't know. Um, I think the dread one people, the last video I ever did, it was like this dude who's like crazy, obscenely large. And um, people just really like that genre. Right. Uh, Mr. D. Well, <laughs> so with that being said, then the question that leads into that is because, uh, uh, I think that's kind of an understatement for Dread. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so after doing something like that, is is how does that affect your dating world? Like, how does that affect your dating world? Because it's you know it, it's uh, I'm going to assume it's one thing you know when you do you know do porn and all that, mm. but uh, if a guy accidentally stumbled across your your video, not knowing that you were with somebody like Dread. Does something like that affect your dating your dating life? Because I'm sure porn does in the first place. Um, but you know, with that being said, does that extra feature does that? Yeah, I mean, my ex lost his shit over that. Like that was the constant issue was that I did interracial porn, and he was like, he didn't care, but he was like, you're ruined this, that, the other thing, like all the stereotypes he would bring up. But right. I was just like. You know, it's a scene, it's acting, you do a job, I was hired to do a job, I got paid to do the job, I did the yeah. job. Like, um, But most people see, like, I wasn't dating the guy, I wasn't in love with the guy, I don't hang out with the guy, it's just right. like, hi, how you doing, let's exchange tests, let's be safe about it, have a day at work, make it a good day, and go home. And what, what's an average, what's an average day on, on, the, on the set, like, like, how many hours for one scene does it take? Usually about six hours, hair, makeup, and everything. Okay. But I have had it take like 10, 12. And, and do, you, do you look at sex the same now? Or is it like, or do you separate the two? Or do you not really, you're kind of like, eh, I'm good. I don't really care for it too much. I mean, I definitely separate the two because one's work and one's real life. You know, one has love involved, one has emotions involved, and one is just like, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, one night stands. Like, I hear you. So when did you, when did you end up in Vegas? Because I remember you talking about that. Mm. So I was originally on the East Coast flying out to Florida in California to film, and then I moved out to Vegas so I could be closer to filming. So that, was probably like 2000. Were... that was probably like 2015. I was filming and then I started dancing in probably 2000. I didn't really, I dance, I did feature dancing, which is when you have a contract. So you're making at least $1,000 to walk in the door and then you're getting all the tips. Now be honest with me. Now in, the, in them clubs, is there a champagne room? I mean, there's champagne rooms. Nothing goes down in them. Yeah. <laughs> No, I don't still do porn. I stopped. I retired about, um, God, four years ago now. Probably more. Five years ago. Now, when you were traveling state to state and dancing and this and that, what was your, like, I don't want to say favorite state, but what was, you know, the best experience and what state did you have the most fun? 
yeah, obviously Vegas. I mean, yeah. Vegas is always like you'll get a lot of celebrities. You'll get a lot of like compared people throwing a thousand dollars compared to California. Compared right. to you know, like I never danced in New Jersey or New York, right. but I can't imagine getting the same action New Jersey and New York. Right. But yeah, I would think California would be up there too. But obviously, Vegas is like numero uno for that. You know. Yeah, Vegas is definitely the hot spot Miami for dancing. Is good too, but uh, yeah, I was just interested because different, literally, a strip club in, in different in every state I go to is different. Yeah. Did porn and, and all this sex? Did it make you hate sex? No, I don't think I could ever get to that point. Like, even like I'm on antidepressants that are supposed to like kill your sex drive, and that never happened with me. It was just like a very high sex drive naturally, and um. It could never kill it, but it was like I was able to fulfill any fantasies that I had or any type of things that I wanted to experience. I was able to experience in a safe environment. Now, out of all of them, like not all of them, but a lot of like porn stars or, you know, a lot of entertainers, you have that natural look. Would, did you ever think about having to get like the BBL and, the, and then the breasts, you know, implants? No, I mean, now I have them. After I retired from porn, I did what I wanted to do. But in porn, oh, they, wanted, okay. they wanted me to be very young looking and like 18, you know, college school girl, um, like very natural looking and young. So less tattoos, hide the tattoos. Hey, that's crazy how they, uh, the, the porn industry grooms borderline, like, you know, PDF file stuff. You know what I mean? Yes, that's why it's like I wouldn't say any of them were profound movies. And that's the like, kind of stuff you experience towards your exit. You know? Yeah, and it's like I was twenty five playing an eighteen year old, working with other eighteen year olds, and I was like, "Girl, do you have an out plan? Like, are you, how are you going to explain this to your kids? Like, have you thought about these things?" And right. we've had a lot of girls die. Like when I was in, we lost. I think like five girls in 90 days. Wow. And like yeah, a couple, a couple was suicide, which was one of them was my friend, August Ames. And then um, oh, she yeah. got August uh, Ames, RIP. Yep. RIP. She, she got bullied to death and uh, hung wow. herself. Yeah. RIP and, to her. She was really good. Yeah. Uh, she was good people. I just know, guys, I just know for research purposes. All right. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> We, did our due, we had to do our due diligence, yeah. But let me mm -hmm. let me ask you this, Jen. So, was you in Hollywood a lot? Did you ever go to Hollywood? Because yeah, of course. Well, I know you said you knew Adam Twenty Two and Lena at one point, right? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I don't know if you ever seen the movie. Uh, I'm sorry, this is a long question. I don't know if you ever seen the movie Eyes Wide Shut, right? It's a it's like a Illuminati type movie of orgies and sacrifices. Have you seen anything crazy in Hollywood being in that lifestyle? Oh, I mean, I was at those parties. Okay. So there's a club. I'm allowed to talk about it because it's public knowledge now. But there's a club called... Um, I, I don't know if they, they have a different oh, name. Whoa, whoa, Vicky talked about it. So you can't talk about it. Not P-Whoa Vicky, not P-Whoa. <laughs> whoa Vicky, the actual Whoa Vicky. <laughs> so I know Whoa Vicky, she, she talked about mm -hmm. that. But that I never saw anything like that. Like No blood sacrifices or weird shit. But they have like a um, Hollywood sex club, which like they would hire porn performers to put on live shows. So okay. I got hired to do a couple live shows. Did you ever get approached That's by the wine or did you ever get approached by Adam 22 like to do anything like that? No, thank God. Like I kind of told him off and gave him attitude when I met him. Oh, interesting. <laughs> interesting. Was he even doing porn at that time? He, they were just starting to like interview porn stars, and I think they were working on content on the back burner. But they, yeah, most people do yet. it for a while, but they don't release it and like really get jump all the way into it. They might have personal videos, but he's definitely probably been doing it. Yeah, so they were at the Pornhub Awards when Kanye yeah. West hosted it. Oh, yeah. where was that held at? Um, Hollywood. Oh, okay. Hollywood. And and so obviously you attended that. Were you like a nominee or were you just there? Um, I don't think I was nominated for the Pornhub Awards. I never really promoted Pornhub or tried to get like a big following because it's a free website. But I was nominated for like the AVNs and Expos Awards. I didn't win any, but to be nominated was cool enough. 
Do mm. y'all remember when Pornhub changed like a couple years ago? It just it went from you could look, upload anybody upload anything until it went to original content. Um, they had a bunch of problems of people uploading stuff where the age wasn't verified. So now they wanted to make it harder to put stuff on there so they could verify the ages. Hmm. Now, now, I'm like construction wise, I do uh, cement saw cutting. That's what my trade is demo <laughs> cement saw cutting. And every year, our boss would pick one person that he would take to Vegas and we would, uh, and you would get like a couple of days, they paid the company and paid for everything. And it was like going, it was going to, a like a saw cutting convention. So mm-hmm. it was next door to the porn convention. So we were always fighting over who got to go. Oh yeah. Like sure shot. There was, um, the concrete expo. Yep. There it is. The concrete expo. You go and try yeah. out saws and different core drills. And I never got to go. But. Yeah, no, it was always interesting. Um, like how they would have conventions next door and they just see and they're like, what the fuck is going on? And it's like, well, this is oh, bad. But then it's like, well, it's Vegas. You can't be really that surprised. Yeah, exactly. And then they have <laughs> conventions that I went to in like Chicago and Jersey and all over Florida. Okay. Oh, so you, yeah, touched down in Florida. How was it like out there? No clubs? Were you working out there or? No, I didn't dance out there. Just I just vacations. filmed out there. Yeah, I was vacationing and filming. Oh, all right. Like, um, I was in St. Pete, of- Tampa, and Miami, and Fort Lauderdale. Oh, yeah, I've been out there to um, Tampa and St. Pete. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, they film a lot out here. I've I've seen a couple. I've seen that bald head dude before. In, uh, oh, um, before. Johnny Sins, yep. No, not Johnny Sins. I, the other bald head dude. Oh, I don't know. The one that's a Johnny Sins kind of wannabe. He's kind of, but he's more in shape. Pause. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> if someone in the chat knows you're not gay, forgive me that answer, by the way. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> drop that. Plug, man. <laughs> oh, yo, what the hell? Uh, <laughs> all right, so let me let me ask you this then, Jen. So, uh. Normally, this would be a question for advice for the young girls, but I hope there's no young girls watching my channel. Yes. So, with that being said, is there advice that you could give dads that may help, you know, maybe prevent them from, uh, their daughters from going down that road? I know with mm-hmm. uh, social media the way it is, it's kind oh, of yeah. next to impossible. Yep. Uh, but if there was any kind of advice you could give us, to give to to not even give our daughters but maybe to do in our lives that could maybe maybe prevent that yeah i mean so you definitely want to be involved always you know you want to be in there and be a good role model but it's just letting them know that they're worth more like you can't put a price like for me anyone who meets me i just assume that they've seen me naked but there's no price that you can put on that at the end of the day like yeah i put a price on it but i was also stupid i didn't know but to put tell your daughters that there's no price because you know people are seeing only fans and it's popular and you can do it from home you don't have to go to florida you don't have to go to california you know um but just letting them know that there's no price for their dignity that there's no price they can put on mystery that's the sexiest thing is mystery that no guy knows what he's gonna get with you until he's with you like, I used to be able to tell guys, like, in high school, and guys would be like, oh, I slept with Jen. And I was like, no, you didn't. What tattoos do I have? What piercings do I have? But now everybody and their brother knows what tattoos and piercings I have. Right. You know, so there's no price on your mystery. And for guys to worship that and to not um, give that away for free or for five ninety nine or for whatever OnlyFans or whatever quick money. And just letting them know not all quick money is good money. You know, like now you could kind of sell weed and it's not a felony, but now you can do more things. I'd rather my daughter do DoorDash than do OnlyFans. Right, back. Hey, this is the guy I was talking about, J Mac. Pause. Oh, J Mac. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know him. Hey, I've seen him all the time in uh, Ebor City. It's crazy. Yeah, um, no, he just stays out there. He doesn't even come to California. Yeah, he lives in Miami, I believe. Yep. Yeah, yeah, Fort Lauderdale. Oh, Fort Lauderdale. Okay, okay. But uh, so what's your relationships with other stars? I know you were naming some the last time we were talking to you, but 
who is who would you say was your best friend in the industry and who's the one that you hated the most oh that's a good one that is a good one um, <laughs> I told you i had 13 that... questions ran down guys let's go oh yeah so best friend um i was good friends with cassidy klein that was one of my best friends um felicity feline um jocelyn kelly we were good friends um oh gosh what's her other i know her real name but i'm trying to think of her porn name um you ever meet lena rhodes yeah of course i i we had the same agent oh okay yep and then right. uh, um the person that i liked the least and liked me the least was a bella danger me and her hated each other Oh, yeah, Why though. is that? I would say. Because we had the same agent, and he, like, would want you guys to be friendly and stuff, but, like, I wouldn't be her little minion. Like, I didn't want to um, run errands with her. I didn't want to run errands for her. I didn't want to be her little minion. I was my own person, even if I was a smaller name and smaller brand. And then, um, uh, she would just like talk shit, you know, simple catty girl stuff like that. Hey, there's a question in the chat. Have you ever worked at the ranch? Shout out to DJ with the question. No, I never worked any of those. I was already like um, doing the do, you know, the illegal way. And, uh, you know, once you're in with the, you know, human traffickers, we all call them because that's what they're actually charged with now. They have a case ongoing, the people that I used to work for. There's like loyalty. And if you go and look at anyone else, they'll never work with you again. And you'll be on the streets and you'll be getting beat up and you'll be, you know, like with bums. Damn. So they like hey, put this Ms. loyalty. Miss Stone wants to know, or Miss Dane wants to know if you worked with uh, Lee Stone. And now I never heard of him. What about Sadie West? You ever heard of her? Mm mm. Oh, her and I used to talk. I think she was out that way for a little while. Nice. Yeah, there's so many people on like yeah. I would get close to people and try to tell the new girls like get a savings plan, save your money, get health insurance. Like you don't get health insurance this job, you have to pay for it. Um so I would try to tell people, but then when people started dropping dead, it hurts your heart so much. Like, I'm a giant softie, and uh, it just hurt. I'm like, there was, like, a 19, 20-year-old girl that died of a UTI. Oh, no. I'm like, how the fuck do you die of a UTI in 2020 or, like, 2018, wow. whenever it was? Right. How about That's House crazy. Because yeah. House Phone was, I'm not going to lie, House Phone was going through a lot of those those girls back in the day, even Lena, he had sex with Lena. Did you do anything with a house phone? No. Okay. No. Is that a no or a hell no? That's a hell no. I... <laughs> See, I was never like a clout chaser. Like I was right, right. I was always happy being like unknown and under the radar. So that way when I retired, it would be easier to retire and um go out without like people stalking me or right. people wanting to know where I am still. Like, I've been retired. Did you have like, to deal with a lot of that? A like, lot of people have Yeah, seen, that's actually a good question. What was your craziest experience with a stalker or, like, crazy fan or... Hmm. Oh. I mean, I don't, know if they, I don't know if this was a fan of my industry work or if this was a fan of my streaming, but somebody showed up to my house. Whoa. That's and was like, extreme. she knows oh, wow. me, she knows me. What? That's a good question. Wow, that's, hey, that's kind of scary, though. Mm -hmm. Damn. You know, being a female. Shit in the industry. Gotta get yourself a few pit bulls, man. Some yep. pit bulls, man. Yeah, um, you know. Drug addiction is very, very rampant in the industry. You like, because it's easier to control you. You'll do more crazy scenes. You won't yep. care about tearing and ripping. You'll rely and, on them. and yeah. yeah, exactly. You'll spend all your money as soon as you make it, need another scene, and you'll do any type of scene. You know, there were a lot of videos that I said no to. Right. Awesome, Greg Mode. I see you in the chat. Uh, what, are the most, what, are the most, uh, what are the most common drugs? Um, pain pills. Pain pills and coke. And ecstasy. Yeah, the love drug. Yeah. 
Oh. Obviously. And probably I'm going to say Viagra and Cialis. Say, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's just <laughs> Yeah, no, that's I know. Mando. That's Mando. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure meth is big, too, because I've probably seen yeah, yo, too. Some of the girls I know that I went to high school with that went on to be stars. You know, their face caved in. Uh, yeah. There, you know, it, it meth is a good sex drug. You know, I wouldn't know personally. I mean, no, nah, no, nah, we appreciate you doing the research for us, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he dug I, up. I some... thought it was Molly, Ronnie. Gosh. Yo, <laughs> hey, no, no, I meant yeah, the, the research, research, but hey, that that's like you know, the, I think a lot of people would pass it off as that sometimes the low drug. Yeah, like I saw people doing it before, but I didn't know what it was, and there probably was probably like... a transition, like. They will go from that to that probably. Well, that shit, that shit will have you going rounds. <laughs> you know what I mean? You'd be like, boom, ready to go. You know, fucking. Yeah, that's just definitely a love, can be a love drug. Well, yeah. I'm talking about the Molly, but I'm sure it could lead up to the Beth, you know? Yeah. Oh, well, the Molly? Yeah, I'm progress. talking about. I was thinking the Yayo would be a big in that industry, you know? No. Yeah. no I get well, I, see, that throws me off. Me too, AZ. It's somebody. No, no, I don't mean personally. I just mean like to keep pe- people up. Probably more for the females. I don't know. I well, a lot yeah, of people saw cocaine think. as a diet plan. Like one of my girlfriends right. was like, "I lost fifteen pounds." That's and I'm crazy. Like, That's not That's good. That's so unhealthy. I yeah. bet you did. <laughs> <laughs> shit. In your yeah, face. because that shit. You got whiskey dick and you got coke dick. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, guys wouldn't use it, but the girls would. Right. right. Okay. See, that's what we're yeah. Like I knew girls that got their noses redone, snorted, Whoa. and needed another new nose. Oh lordy! Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, my accent. Two tree, two tree of them. Yeah, there's only one guy I knew that was like really bad on coke. So now it's 2023, Jen, and I've been hearing. So from our from the last time we talked till now. I've been getting a lot of people coming to me saying, yo, Dylan, new age, you got to, you got to be careful, bro. That's, she's part of the IP2 community. <laughs> what is the IP2 community? So IP2 is anti-Ice Poseidon. And um, I, I don't know if you know what Ice Poseidon, the CX network was, but about five years ago, right when I was in, right in, when I was like ending porn and doing OnlyFans, you know, by myself and like with people I was dating, um, I met Ice Poseidon, who was a very large streamer. He would have like three to 5,000 people watching him every stream. And um, yeah, he would have a lot of viewers. He'd get a lot of donations. He was making like $10,000 a month living in the center of Hollywood, living in the best places, like three-story uh, condo. And um, he would play video games, but he would also introduce characters. So all mm-hmm. of these characters would be called Andy. So you would have Asian Andy, Mexican Andy, uh, Autism Andy, uh, Ski Mask Andy. Andy. Yeah, but no he called himself shit. that. Yep. Any Irish Andy's? <laughs> the, I don't uh, no, but they had they had a a butler that was from England, I think. They got an Andy and the an Andy. <laughs> but what does Ski Mask Andy do? I mean, I know we didn't want to freaking talk about him, but... Oh, I don't care. Yeah, like, we'll what? Look. Like, I don't understand. Like, so that they that guy made characters and he was one of them? What the He fuck? didn't make him a character. Like, Ski Mask started streaming and he wore a ski mask and he went outside of the house. He wasn't invited in. Like, when I showed up, oh. I showed up without telling anybody. I was invited right in, like a party. You know, like, oh, yeah. you get to come in. We want to hang out with you. Hey. And I was never an Andy because I had my own name and brand. I was like, nobody's yeah. going to fucking call me shit but Bobby or Jen. Right. And um, so then um, Ski Mask showed up outside of the house like, you know, oh, I want to see. I want to see what this is about. I want to make money. I want to make viewers. I want to do all this. And he wore a ski mask while doing it so everyone in the chat called him ski mask andy but okay. he was never like invited into the parties he was never invited into the in crowd so first it was that cx network which i was on then they started hating ice beside and turning on him because he wasn't making the type of content they wanted so they wanted to control him and manipulate him and you know control the um 
Andes and all these characters that he made and have them stream 10 times a day, you know, have them stream, you know, getting arrested, doing drugs, like bad downfalls. So IP2 was created to push them for like the evil side of streaming. But IP2 has like died off. It's so much infighting and there's so much drama and like toxic shit that like people don't want to have anything to do with it so it's not like growing they just put people on the network and then because i was on cx network i'm automatically on ip2 okay when what kind of uh i guess what kind of damage have you received from doing that uh you know from them at least from is there are they trolls or what are they yeah i mean they're trolls but it was years ago when they were actually like something to be scared of quote unquote like um i'd been ddos which is when they take down your internet for like a minute and you just restart your router and it's back up um i i don't think i've had any pizzas or anything called to my house um but i've been docs where people put out my address and then that one guy showed up to my house um that had to be scary well, luckily, my ex was there at the time and just, like, beat him up and, like, chase him down the block. Well, that works. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it's not anything to be scared of. It's definitely, like, an alternative, sketchy part of the internet. But it's nothing to be scared of. They're not what they used to be. Right. I ain't gonna lie, man. We've interviewed... I ain't gonna lie to y'all, right? We've interviewed uh, King AK, uh, Milk74... But this one I'm, like, nervous about because, I don't know, because I'm not going to lie to you, Jen. I'm married. I got four kids, right? Oh, nice. <laughs> my wife, I don't know if my wife would be too happy about doing an interview with a former or whatever, right? <laughs> but I let her know earlier, and she was all cool about it, which was great. That's but, dope. Yo, she she, she supports it, bro. But, <laughs> but and finding questions, it's this was out of our element a little bit, AZ and Blue Eyes, and I don't know, man. It, my bad if I'm a little nervous. No, it's all good. How I relate it to like jail tube and prison tube whatever you guys want to call it is like my bobby dylan is my inmate number i'm putting that number so far behind me and it's dead to me that like i never and not that i never want to see that name again but it it doesn't serve me anymore like i'm jen i'm a mom i'm a student i'm a worker i've made so much and being in the industry has the same um how would you call it uh stereotypes as being in prison People think you're never going to do anything different. You're never going to be better. You're never going to change. So you have this weight on you that, like, you got the old inmate number following you around. People are like, even in the chat right now, people are like, why are you using your name? Like, see, you want to do porn again. Like, motherfucker, I can talk about my inmate number. I did my time. Right. <laughs> and that's, we're, all, we're all a work in progress at the end of the day. It ain't, you know, where you've been, it's where you're at. You know, so what, what's your paperwork look like, Jen? How, what, like, how many times you've been in jail and stuff? What's going on with that? Uh, so I, I beat every case I've ever gotten. Thank you for the lawyer money, nah, adult industry. And I had a two assault charges and I beat them both. Nice, nice. Yeah. Are good women or men? Uh, one was a uh, like security guard for a hospital. And one was a girl, and that video is on YouTube. Damn. Okay, uh, let me go get the link for that real quick. What, what, is, always, <laughs> what is yeah, uh, video. What is that video under? Uh, it's under Bobby Dylan Alice fight. Oh, okay, Ooh. we'll check that. Maybe, I, maybe, maybe on mine because I think AZ gets is monetized. I think. <laughs> yeah, that shit was funny. My bad, Hunter Zan's coughing. Anyways, Hunter Zan's what up, brother? <laughs> Salute. That was up, but yeah, I mean that, that's that's what everybody was saying. Like, watch out for the IP to me. Okay, okay. I think I think our our community, when it comes <clears throat> to uh, like the hip hop and the prison genre, all that, dude. These guys get pretty grimy too. Like, we've already been through the dog scene and all that. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, I was we're just interested about that. Like, why why are you still online? Like, are you still? Uh, what community are you in now? Um, I mean, I'm still online in the sense of, like, a viewer. 
Like I like to watch 90 Day Fiance, Love After Lockup, Life After Lockup. I love that shit. <laughs> YouTube Streets Podcast, of course. Yeah, YouTube Streets Podcast. I like uh, I like some of the prison tube or whatever you want to call it. Right. I like some of the drama channels that cover the shows that I watch. Well, Tony Friend of Rivera calls it the fic, the uh, a formerly incarcerated community. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I call it prison tube. <laughs> prison tube that's good that's good um it, there's prison tiktok too i don't know if you've seen that yeah no i got, like got, the one girl the one girl that was like a meth head and yep. she always posts like this is how you talk to your sugar daddy in jail yeah yeah they mm -hmm. don't have a hard time uh switching over to youtube either like the dante show he came from tiktok uh there's been a couple guys um ian bick i believe ronnie he came from tiktok he's been doing the yeah yeah we're um, gonna get him on next whoa and then in, the, in the, like a few weeks AZ yeah. Ructions on TikTok. Make sure y'all go follow him. Hello. So with the bad and good involved in the industry, what was some of the, like, what would you say is like some of the best things you've seen or experienced and, and what was the worst? Um, The best things that I've seen. Like that you could take, because you know how we try to take some positive yeah. from any negative situation. So, what was the worst you've seen, but what's the positive you took from it? Hmm, worst that I've seen? Um, it would definitely be, like, the human trafficking, the sex trafficking, where, like, they'll take your ID, they'll have you living in their house, they'll call you all types of crazy names, they'll break you down mentally, emotionally, physically, and get you, like, loyal to them, and, like... So, starting to be exposed to stuff like that was yeah, kind of the, the end yeah, all be all be the for... Worst. All right, yeah. So is that what you just planned your exit strategy or? Yeah, for sure. I was like, I'm done with this. Like, they right. got the wrong bitch. Like, I'm not, I'm not addicted to drugs. I don't need the money like this. I can go back to get a regular job, and make hourly wage. Yep. And then what I took from that was, um, we had a case. We had a federal case, and we are helping put them away so that way they don't do that to anyone else's daughter because it's like you can't treat a human like a dog and try to break them and try to get them to work for you and try to put them under you and um, make all this money off them yeah that's not support that's gorilla yeah and, uh, and then it's like um to be able to protect other people's daughter because even if i had a son like i would still want to protect other people's daughters yep. because it shouldn't happen to anybody right so on a good night right let's say vegas mm -hmm. you're dancing you're in mm -hmm. vegas what would you think you made probably on your best night you could touch on that uh my best night or on a good night or on an acceptable night an acceptable night <laughs> uh i mean i always stayed until it was an acceptable night i wasn't going home with no money right um because well you know this yeah, this bigger and better always coming in and out. And then you have your average riffraff, so. Yeah. Um, my best night was probably like $2,500, $3,000. All right. Um, and that's in one night, people, I right? You know. Yeah, that's in like six to eight hours. All right. And then, um, you know, having a fun time, like, when celebrities would come in, that was always cool as fuck. And like, right, and that's what I mean about, you know, an, an acceptable night. Um, yeah. You know, you never know who's going to come in the door. I know some, you know, athletes and some rappers that threw out some crazy amounts of money when I was in the strip club with them. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. Yeah, it's but crazy. You could buy a few cars, you know. Oh, yeah. No joke. But For sure. Yeah, it's crazy what they spend. Like they'll just they can't even hit the ATM because the ATM doesn't have limits like that. They gotta go to the cashier cage. Two box and, money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And bring out their bring out their card, clear the card for like twenty thousand, thirty thousand, forty thousand, and then just get racks and racks and racks and plastic. Right. You're good. I got you. You good, bro? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. My lady just got home from work, so. All right, yeah, I can't hear you. I got you. We've been carrying on the conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my bad, my bad. 
Where, 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 where we at? I was just asking her her best night in Vegas, which she raked up. Oh, okay. So she Vegas touching, is a fun place. She touching yeah. on about three grand in like six hours. Yep. Oh shit! Which ain't bad. Right. Not, Not at all. But then it makes it hard because you don't want to go back to work. You're like, I just paid my rent. I paid my car note. Like, I right. need to go back for shit. Hey, is, like, are you comfortable, like, saying, like, what's the most you've made? In one, say, in one day. Or even from, like, one one scene or one film or whatever. Okay. Like, okay. okay. From that industry, yeah. Yeah, I would say the most I made in a day is about 5000 Okay. All right, so almost so about doubling your your best night on dance tonight. Yeah, so definitely like you had the opportunity to make more money, right. but it's not good money because, like I said, then your video is out there forever. You don't have any royalties to it. Right. Well, that's a bad hit. That's like being an artist, like a rapper, and not getting your masters and your mix or owning your own copyrights. That's crazy. Exactly. That's hard to deal with. Is it is it like is it like how like normal people would think like like most people probably think that you're probably out like busting scenes out every day for exactly. months on end, but realistically I don't think it's like that, right? It was like well, more spread think out. About or... what you made in one day, you wouldn't have to. I'm sure some people chase it, but let's let her re- elaborate. But hey, if you're making up to five Gs in one day, you wouldn't right. have to chase it every day, but. That's a, yeah, that's but a I want question. money, so I probably would some try. People, you know, huh. some girl, you know, some girls are chasing that though. Yeah, well, some people had to chase it because they had a drug addiction. So you give them five thousand dollars to the drug addiction, they're smoking it, they're snorting it, they're popping it, and it's gone in two weeks. Yeah. You know, you give somebody like me five grand, and it's good for three months. Oh yeah. So for me, I would work like three days a month. You know, sometimes I would try to get more. But I was never like, I never wanted to be a top star. I never wanted to be an award winner. I never wanted to be the best of the best because I wanted to be able to retire and like nobody know who I am. And when you did that, was there any like backup plans, projects, or habits you like to get into or you wanted to do like to follow up with anything, whether it was art or any other thing you were into or it was just completely uh-huh. just ducking out i want to get out of here get out the scene lay low uh, i was into like nursing school like you oh, know that's I was awesome that. hey not to be ironic but like two of the dancers two of the strippers that i've dated were both nighttime nurses, nurses. Yeah. i know it's so i common. swear to god that yeah. real estate agents and that used to be my dream girl. I used to, like I like a I like a stripper to keep me entertained, but a nurse to keep me healthy. So one and the same one that's that's perfect. Ah, <laughs> uh, hell yeah, Ronnie. <laughs> hey, hey, what do you say? Yo, what do you know? Yeah, like I thought um I thought it'd be cool to like do a stream and like or a podcast or something. And people always told me I should write a book, but I was just like Oh, you, you know, thought all right. Of, uh, yeah. <laughs> I thought that it would be interesting to just like talk about um, right. the sex industry and like I did a lot. And of there's streams. a big audience for that. Yeah, and I did a lot of streams about news, what was going on, and like the trafficking, okay. and you know what was really going on in behind the scenes. Well, that and, that might be well, different when you start going mm-hmm. against the grain. You might get different. Oh, feedback. I was always How against the that? grain. Yeah. yeah, they they always hated me because I talked out and okay. couldn't fucking control is, myself. Is like underage is that a is that a thing no because they check your id your birth certificate like your social security so they're not like secretly like making films like that or like have you heard like i've heard of stuff but not like that right right good well at least you stay clear from some terrible shit like you know yeah like there's a lot of evil out there and it's like you agree to do so much, and they're like, now nah, we want more, we want more. And sometimes yeah. it's easier to get mixed up in this type of these type of things than people would think. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, of course. That's why I think it's very easy for people to like 
go down to Florida, make a video, go down to California, make a video. But now it's even easier with OnlyFans. People don't have to go anywhere. They don't have to have a partner. They don't have to yeah. have the STD tests. Like, so it's, yeah. it's scarier because like... I thought I thought tricks was fools before. Now they ain't even linking in person. It's crazy. It's a whole different game. But hey, I can't knock no one for what they do. So we'll... All mm-hmm. right, whole time, right? We've been talking about, you know, your whole profession, but we haven't talked about you. Yeah, no. We haven't talked about you. Like mm-hmm. your love life. Let's talk about your love life. Like, what's going on with that? I know you have a kid. How many kids do you have? Only one. And that's what uh, Skid. What do you want to say his name? What do we What do we call him? Blue collar. Uh, Skid Mark uh, Andy. Skid Mark Andy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's your that's your baby daddy, and he's a piece of shit, right? Yeah. Unfortunately, like I thought I was gonna be one of those girls that like. Oh, I rode with him through jail. Like, I gave him commissary. I gave him money on the books. I, you know, did everything you're supposed to do. But, you know, if you just, like, love someone so much, maybe they'll change. But you can't change somebody that doesn't want to be changed. And, like, they're just broken and, like, have mental health issues. And, like, every time they go to jail, obviously, he goes on meds. But then he gets off meds when he gets out. And all the, like, lover boy talk and all that, like jail talk all those little letters are bullshit yeah we talked about e-beggars right he's the biggest e-beggar i've ever seen on the internet i'm sorry for sure no for sure like there's no there's nobody that compares to that like i'm sorry it was bad well and he begged through the whole pregnancy and was like people donated like a hundred dollars to her college fund i never got the hundred dollars oh of course not like, you know, like, people would be like, here's for your daughter's first pair of shoes. Like, here's for your daughter's diapers. And, like, he bought two packs of diapers, which are, like, you know, 40 bucks each. That's 80 bucks. And then one set of outfits, which is, you know, 10, 20 bucks. So he spent less than $100 on his daughter forever. He'll wake up one day. Um, uh, but, but what about your love life now? Who, who are you with? Or are you single? Yeah, I mean, I'm just testing out everything, seeing what's out there, focusing on my kid, you know, giving her the best of everything. Um, so you have a profession now, or if you don't, you don't have to share that actually, but if like maybe something like, are you, do you go to school mm-hmm. after the whole thing or? Yeah, I go to school and then I'm also yeah. in the medical field and that's, that's awesome. what I wanted. I wanted to be in some type of medical profession. Uh, I like helping people. I feel like. You know, and you're helping people, even if they recognize you from somewhere, which I don't get recognized often because I look so different now with, like, I got my boobs done, I got more tattoos, I have, like, I had different color hair for a while. So, um, I don't get recognized, and people aren't going to be like, oh, you can't help me anymore because I know who you used to be. Mm. Is that something you worry about? Yeah, of course. I mean, I've had people contact me on my Instagram, which I changed my name, and they were like, are you Bobby Dylan? Like, you look hella like her. And I'm like, oh. yes, I'm Bobby Dylan. Damn. Yeah. Hey, yo, I used to use this when I, I, I would be in the music game and the rap game. If I wasn't, like, if I was in an antisocial mood and someone's mm-hmm. like, hey, yo, you severe, you want any blue eyes? I'm like, oh, that's my brother. Oh, thank you. Until I get all the face tats, but yeah, it used to work sometimes. <laughs> a point Ronnie, where you were a different. You used your account to get an interview with me, and it worked to the to the T. And i I would never I would never take any of that all that back. I would I uh, I strongly recommend people to have multiple accounts, promote yourself, treat yourself like an Andrew Tate. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. You got to do what you got to do for yourself. No one's going to do it for you. Yeah, definitely. Because when you have kids, like, you got to support them. You got to have and, insurance. You and then you got to do what you got to do for them. Yep, exactly. And that's a whole different ball game. Facts. Oh, yeah. Facts. Ronnie's a genius. You guys are geniuses. Oh, mm-hmm. my dog. But, uh, yeah, like, I don't know, man. I don't know about y'all, but let me ask AZ Ruction this question. Yo. Yo. Time in your life, did you ever think about going in? I know because you know, Cuzzo was in the industry, right? But he was doing weird shit. Did you ever think about no? Shut up, Hunter Zans. Let me let me do this. Like, <laughs> have you ever have you ever thought about it, AZ, at one point going into the industry but doing the you know, some straight shit? 
Like, just fucking some bitches, you know what hey, I'm saying? Hey, yo, plug, I love yeah. you for asking AZ and not me, but AZ, you got to answer that. <laughs> no, I'm coming to you, bro. I mean, Brody, I yeah, got of course. You got to call know, my yeah. manager. <laughs> which is yeah, which course, is you know, which is you which is plug <laughs> well me and, well, i have i have i have my opportunities you know what i mean yeah with some pretty big company i had my opportunities at one point right uh my you mom may not do it though right uh, you thought about uh, it she the way the way when i had told her what the opportunity was she was upset no. yeah. and i could hear it in her voice and uh you know, she already didn't agree with what I was doing. So mm -hmm. when that went into that, that's how she's like, "Now you're doing too much." Yeah, the way the <laughs> way the way her voice made me feel was like, "Damn." Hey, to each his own, you know what I mean. Some people find they their way. Like into it. Some people need to get there. Yep. I, was about yeah, to, I, I think I, I just turned nineteen. Yeah, Az could have oh. did fakes of a young Woody Harrelson. <laughs> <laughs> now ronnie blue ronnie blue we already know what you do we already know about the only fans go ahead and <laughs> nah that's cat go ahead go ahead are you gonna start one though because a lot of people were asking nah i mean scandalous entertainment check it out it's all music it's all music and if i do you're gonna be producing it so <laughs> <laughs> you know wait what <laughs> my d my d said he would you know sling the wood on camera i don't know if that's a pun because he's a wood but it's funny yeah salute wood my d's it's my favorite wood on YouTube. Tantra, you know what i mean let's go bud that's just yeah. fun my d cracks me up <laughs> uh yeah the, yeah i don't know so with this <laughs> in that industry was a lot of other girls like snakes or did you find any real bonds or friends or like yeah, to, definitely to found close friends to, to, to and, this like, day, or I'm, yeah, definitely found friends and girls that I'm close with, and like other people who are like trying to get the word out about the industry and like the toxicity and the abuse that you go through. So it's definitely mm. cool to have people that I can talk to about that because not a lot of people understand it. And it and, seems like you could be a voice for younger women considering this kind of stuff, you know? Yeah, especially with how yeah, popular definitely. it's getting. And like how easy it is to do from home now to be like only fans or camming and things like that. And I feel like women just need to realize from others mistakes like mine is like you don't have to be putting it all out there. You don't it's better to have mystery to you. Mm. And that is a crazy lifestyle and it creates a lot of crazy situations. And with that being said, what what was the most awkward situation you ever found yourself in? This interview. <laughs> nah, she loved. This is her favorite interview she's ever had. Um, awkward. Most yeah. awkward position. They gotta be. They gotta be something. Yeah, no, of course. I feel like the most awkward position is just when you have awkward threesomes. Right. You know, well, maybe, like, maybe like a couple that ain't all the way in on it. Like, I've experienced yeah. that where like my chick's like down, and then halfway through she's like, "You're kissing no, her no. more. You're kissing her more." I'm like, "What the fuck?" Like, oh yeah, no, I'll get up. And little I've, little I've, shit. I've, they get jealous. I've gotten up and walked out before. Oh wow. I'm like, I'm done with this. Okay. Um. That's yeah. that's that's not awkward. That's a Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. No, <I'm> <laughs> But it's just funny, like, uh, I would say that was the most awkward, just like, um, or, kind of situations. Know, there was one girl that she had a bad yeast infection oh. and we had, to, yeah, we had to do it. TMI. Hey, this is, this is real. Hey, get, hey, yeah. it, it goes down with, hey, we're, it, we're, we're our end. So do what you, you know, it, it, keep it, it real. True that, uh, you guys can't, well, I'm not saying you guys, you don't do the no word, but to females that are in this. What do you now, mean? You, yeah, yeah, you guys, know, you know, no, female, yeah. females that are in the industry now, they can't eat corn. Is that true? Can't eat corn. <laughs> oh hey, my god, god bro! I, I know a couple guys, <laughs> and they said they had a they had a piece of corn on their penis. And god, they <laughs> got to because certain people like that. I mean, you you change your diet if you're doing those type of scenes. Like you don't eat. You kind of just like eat. Like, hey, yo. The, go ahead. Go ahead. There's a stereotype <laughs> that like gummy bears will make you pull clean. Yo, that's hilarious. AZ, 
one well, one of our most favorite movies, Black Mass, right? What is my it? Homeboy, my homeboy, you know the movie Black Mass? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Johnny Depp in Boston plays Whitey Bulger. He's mm-hmm. in the back of the whip with the old timer, and they're like, I heard the pawn stars, you know, they eat the celery. The girl in Revere was telling me from the strip club that the pawn stars eat the celery before they perform. <laughs> <laughs> I heard so, I heard celery was one of them through that movie. Yeah. You know? I never heard of celery. I've heard always the like. The hey, you heard now. You're going to learn there. today. Yeah. You know, learn today. <laughs> Oh, shit, right. <laughs> Not cream corn. Gosh, don't be common. Damn. That I ain't corn. looking at the <laughs> chat, bro. So that, that was just so random because I ain't <laughs> looking at the chat. And my homeboy just came out the cut with no cream corn. No, that was from Zan. Hunter Zans yelled that at me. I'm like, dude, come on. Oh, it wasn't even from the chat. Leave it to Zans, man. <laughs> Anyways, no, that was a real. I've actually heard that, like, just because, like, doing anal, you know, sometimes it, it, it appears on the 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 D. So I was, I don't know. Yeah, that was never one of my forte uh, genres. Well, were were there any kind of strict rules or diets? Because, like, let's say, like, because in, for instance, some people like to get their people doped up, and some people like their people sober and wanting them to take a drug test. You know. Mm. Um, weird diets. No, just like if you were to do or like weird that. rules, like you know, no, was anything like, frowned upon, whether it was fraternizing amongst each other outside of the or was that just a go all, all goes go for all? It was like as long as everyone's tested, you're good because you get tested right. every like 13 days, right? Because this, this is a profession, yep, right, yep. And, um, you know, you get tested every 13 days. So as long as you, like, stay good and you're not, like, messing around outside of that test. If you were to go have sex with your boyfriend and he's not tested, your boyfriend could have slept with somebody else, giving you chlamydia, and then you bring it to everybody at work. Yeah, and you got an excuse lined up a uh, year so long. pretty strict, then. Yeah. It tries to be strict, but people still fuck it up. I'm like, come on, like... No yeah. pun, maybe a little bit. Mm-hmm. I had seen a, no, I had seen somebody recorded on uh, what's her name, um, Mia Khalifa. She got something like, oh, I don't know, something bad. I heard uh, it was on somebody did a short on it. I saw on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Really? And she's like ruining the industry now. Well, she only did a couple scenes. She did a couple videos, and then she made, like, oh, I only made $10,000 in porn. It's like, yeah, but you made your name as a brand. And now she does, like, sports telecasting and stuff. Yeah. Is that Ashton Kushner's wife? No. Uh, Mia Khalifa. <laughs> she's like, yeah, uh, Mia Kunis. Kunis. <laughs> oh, all right. Double check it. <laughs> All right, so let me ask you this then. So let, let's say you have you have a younger girl sitting in front of you right now, mm-hmm. and she's thinking about doing going down the same exact road you did. Mm-hmm. What is the advice that you would give her? Oh, we will get into this question. If you really want to do some type of work like that, go be a stripper. Go be a dancer. You're right. safe. There's security. You have limits. Crawl like, before you walk. Yeah, whoever sees you is only the people at the club. It's not everybody in the world out there watching you. You know, go to college, pay for a degree, and get the fuck out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A degree. Yeah, always get a degree. That's a good message. Message. Yeah. Well, hey, we appreciate all the insight. Yeah, I don't know where plug went. I don't know if AZ Russian has a few more questions. Who we got in the I, chat? I really don't. Are we letting she, anyone uh, tap up? Answered a lot of stuff. So, uh, I don't know if you want to. Yeah, uh, I don't think we're gonna let people up because I feel like we would get weird people. No, no, I didn't. Just, I thought we had um some. Of but the if there's decisions. if people have questions, uh, now is the time. Yep. Yeah, chat questions. I'm checking. We could, yeah, definitely. I didn't know if we had any homies in the chat. Let me check it out. We got Miss Thing. We got Jersey in the house. 
DJ D. Salute. Um, the very Talk first time I filmed a scene, I was definitely nervous. Super, super, super nervous. Um, how long did it take me to get past the nerves? I think the whole video, I was like ready to throw up. Now, now, is it because, like, you knew that this wasn't just because between like you and your say like your boyfriend or whatever? Like, is it because you knew that there's a potential that a million people, different people, could see this? Yeah, of course, that a million people could see this. That you're like, you're trying to push yourself to like superstar extent and like an Olympic performance. You're trying to yeah. be like the best at everything, and you're just so nervous of like, how am I going to look? You know, do I have a right. fat roll? Do I have like, am I crunching up the wrong way? Right. I hear that. I hear <laughs> that. But with everything you've been through, if you had like a a dream job or habit, whatever you could do now, if you could do, if you could do whatever you wanted to do, what would that be? Um, if I could do anything that I wanted, I'd be a registered nurse, RN. And that's a goal you're already working on accomplishing? Yeah, I'm trying, but I also, I went to nursing school and then COVID happened. I think right. it's so hard, the classes. It's very, very mm. hard to do. So trying to get through those that. classes, I think I'm just going to do a couple certificate programs rather than going for a full RN. I hear that. Hmm. That's good. Is there one thing you would do different? All of it. All of it. That was yeah, like, that was definitely I've... a question. Um, me and Plug. Yeah. Um, that's a that's a deep question. You know? Explain. Well, explain. Explain what you mean by different. Like yeah. not have done it or have done it differently or. I, I would not have done it. I don't know. I don't think I would have done it. I don't. I feel like I didn't gain anything. I definitely lost some stuff from it, and uh, you know, like uh, you know, it's the same as to ask you guys if you would go back to prison. You know, like or would you not right. do it? Because like you're marked for life, and people yeah, look definitely. at you different. And you always got to wonder if they're looking at you, if they know you from somewhere that you don't want them to know you from and, um, you know, seeing you a way that they don't want you don't want they wouldn't normally ever see you. I mean, for me, it doesn't bother me. Uh, yeah. But like seeing other people seeing me, you know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, definitely. I agree. Like, you know, it, it, it marks you for life. We call it our second social security number. Because exactly. you're always going to have it. It's always going to be with you. I can go back to, if I went back to Arizona prison, I still get the same, ex number, same exact number I had, even if it was 50 years later. Oh, shit. Yeah. So, you know, and I remember it for the rest of my life. 307387. Yeah. Boom. Like, you know what I mean? I said it more times than I've said my own social security number. Because oh. everything you go and do is, what's your DOC number? What's your name? Um, okay. and you give it to them most of the time i don't you don't even give them your social i mean your name you just give them your number and they just look at you they're, you're usually the number is before the name on most like count charts and shit like that so you know say it several times a day even in supermax we said it several times a day so whatever you regret you know there's a lesson in it all and was there a take Definitely. off from it you know as far as the whole industry like from a perspective you're looking at it now yo you're a little bit older you're a mom what yeah, did I you mean, take from it that's most valuable as a lesson you would say um just like to have a um like now i have a platform where i have like a hundred and eight thousand followers on instagram yeah. or something and i can use that as a platform to like warn yeah. people and talk to people and use it like sure. hey you might know me from this, as a voice exactly that's not all that i am and i have more to offer and that's i have great. more that i would warn people about and um you know the that's message great. that i would give young girls with, with that in the nursing it sounds like you know you're going in a positive direction i salute that yes I definitely that. Mm -hmm. it's never too late to change your life it doesn't matter oh, oh yeah no. No. never too late like i said it ain't it ain't where you've been it's where you're at you know and, i've seen where i've seen to be at. and i've seen videos of like people in their 70s and 80s getting their degrees mm -hmm. you know what mm -hmm. i mean like to me that's awesome yeah. you know what i mean that's dope because it just yeah. shows that no matter what 
you go through in your life, at some point in time, you can still do what you wanted to do. Unfortunately, not everything happens right when we want it. That's why we make the decisions that we make. That's why we, because a lot of us want instant gratification for everything. And that yeah. I, I feel like that's just kind of like how it is nowadays. I don't feel like it was like that before. Yeah, I no, like, I get it. I respect yeah. the effort. Like when I'm in the gym and I see someone like heavy set or out of shape, but they're in there, I respect them more than anyone in there because like mm -hmm. they're in there, bro. Like I respect the hell out of that, you know? Because I made it's all my bad effort. decisions due to instant gratification. I made all my bad decisions yeah. because Impulse. I wanted something now. Yeah. I wanted money now. Or I wanted, you know, dope now, or I wanted this now. You know what I mean? Like it, it, mm -hmm. it all came down to something. You know what I mean? And it was a, it, it's a bad trait. It, yeah. If anybody can lose instant gratification, the need for it, yep. your li your whole life can be different. Yeah, exactly. But I still That's want what the it. Industry is too. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because they offer it, they make you guys they, look. They, they, they. In my opinion. Mm -hmm. I feel like the industry at some point when you get in there, they sell you a dream just like a pimp does. A pimp mm -hmm. sells you a dream that very few will obtain. Yep. And that's but they push it as though, you know, you're not you're you're guaranteed. You're gonna get the you know what I mean? Like I feel that that's how I feel a lot of that stuff will, you know, works. Yep. And and that's part of that's manipulation as part of getting people to do what you want them to do, but not necessarily what they would want to do right. yeah. because you're selling shit. You're selling something to somebody. You know what I mean? You're selling you're you're selling the Instagram picture on, you know, that's got, you know, a million likes of a chick and a and wearing hardly anything next to a Ferrari. And then they said down below, ex you know, such and such porn star yeah. or whatever. You know what I mean? They I do the, the same. Next, that Ferrari. I drove the Porsche. Yep. You know what I mean? And that's the yep. lifestyle that you live for to get to. Yep. No, for sure. Then it's like, uh, like you said, only so many girls can be that person. And they sell it to yep. so many girls each year. And their motto in adult is, well, there's a new girl who turns 18 every day. So if we lose, you know, Jen, there's, you know, Becky, Larissa, and Jamie ready to take her spot. That's crazy. Yep, and it's, they all make money off of it. Like, I don't get mm. how a porn agent isn't seen as a pimp, and that's legal. There's all kinds of like uh, gray areas, and it, it, and even with the government and certain industries that are just crazy. Let me let me ask you this. This is probably going to sound like a weird question to people because they might not think that this happens. But what is sexual harassment like? behind the scenes and and that you know with actors directors etc i mean like camera guys um lighting guys videographers so all everybody's those guys, doing it yeah they think that they can get with you because you're a porn star and that it's very hard to find people to date and it's hard to find people who are down with your lifestyle. So they're like, oh, we could hook up. Like, we're all tested. And, you know, I, maybe I'll You're always looking you. at someone's like, angle. Can... So they go get themselves tested in the hopes that they can sleep with a porn star? Yeah. And then it's also like um, that uh, they'll probably He's like, yo, hey, videos. you just did a whole scene with Dread. Yo, let me. Um, uh, <laughs> hey, after yep. this, I've been tested, girl. What's up? Like, yep. <laughs> and they want it to weird. be like um, um, that. Oh, I can get you more videos. I'm friends with people. I know somebody. It's always, oh, I know somebody. I know somebody. How do you look at that, though? Do you go like, dude, you're a light guy? Yeah. What what about the fluffer? <laughs> we don't have fluffers. <laughs> yeah, that's a myth. Yeah, that's uh, definitely a myth. Allegedly. Allegedly. No, it's a myth. It's a myth. Yeah, no, no. Uh, <laughs> so we catch a little wreck. I had a we had a chat question come up that they said, Is it tough to find a man and settle down, find real love because of trust issues and wondering if they truly love you or it's a lust thing from the past? Um, definitely yeah, a, good that's a good question. That's good to feed off the last question because I was gonna ask you about me? relationships. Oh, let's talk about it. 
um it was oh jimbo's got good questions yeah yeah whether people would trip off that or did you have people that understood or was it hard yes like they said my ex tripped off a bit hard like he could never get over it never move on um but i've found people that you know they've known me before the industry after the industry and it's always like, you know, are they just trying to get with a porn star? Are they just trying to get with somebody who was in the industry? Or do they really care for you who you are? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's always hard. You always got to, like, second guess people's intentions. Or if they want you for, like, the clout, the lifestyle, the attention. Yeah, it seems like you got to worry about that when it comes to just about anything in any kind of social media nowadays. Yeah. Like having social media is one thing, but having social media and doing the content is a whole nother thing. Oh, it sucks a dick. I've been at bars before and people are like, Oh my God, like that's your Instagram. Like follow me back, follow me back. Like, come on. Yeah. Yeah. It's sketchy, man. Cause like you said, you get weird, uh, obsessive fanatics. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, there's people who are into that thing where they're like into being embarrassed, like degraded, and they want you to like cheat on them and stuff. And I don't, I don't understand people. Yeah, me neither. I thought I heard it all. (laughs) You know. But hey, AZ, what do you think? We might have to schedule a part two sometime. It's been fun. Oh yeah, no, definitely, man. It's been a. This was a good live. we I, we appreciate you, Jen, for really because you were honest about a lot of stuff and uh, you know some of the questions that were asked were kind of difficult questions, but you handled it like a champ and yeah, it we takes appreciate con- it because you gave the good and the bad. Yeah, for sure. You know what I mean. Definitely so that's kept it real. Yeah, because it, we don't by having you on, it's we're, we don't want to glorify it. Yeah, exactly. you know what I mean. Yeah, there is a part of it. That obviously has to do with what the sub, we you know, do the same thing with our youth, with our streets and our prison and jail stuff. We don't glorify the trouble we've been through. We we, right. we actually glorify the comeback. Yes, because so, a lot of us, a lot of us have, you know, what I mean, you know, there's a lot of people listening right now that have daughters and have kids. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And uh, that's why I asked you that earlier. You know what can we do? You know what I mean? And I know that was a hard question because nowadays, like we said, with social media, it's everywhere. It's yeah. everywhere now. You know it's what I mean? Like, there, face. yeah, there, the actresses a couple, like two years ago were suing uh, for their rights, basically to on, to be able to show their, you know, their titties on Fox and, mm-hmm different channels like that because they were like you know we're missing out on a big chunk of money here Mm -hmm. you know what i mean so it's literally like everywhere now and i find it hard to try and prevent that you know because i came from a good family so it's like Mm -hmm. like i tell people my mom she wasn't a drug addict she wasn't an alcoholic she wasn't Mm -hmm. in the streets ever period Mm -hmm. ever Mm -hmm. you know what i mean so it's like you know I didn't grow up, you know, with drugs around me. I had family members that have done a lot of years, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And, but my mom sheltered us from that. But Mm -hmm. also I learned growing up, sheltering made things worse. Yes. Um, Over sheltering made it worse because when I finally got out, you know, into the world and broke free, I I went crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? My, I went wild. Oh yeah. You know, yeah. so you them so much you choke them up, and they want to be free. Right. You know what I mean? So it's for me. Uh, you being on here wasn't about the sex sales thing. It was the you know, I wanted to know a lot of stuff about for my kids. You know what I mean? I know, of course. Because I know what I, but I didn't. You know, like I know what I've been through. So I can mm-hmm. tell my kids about what I'm, you know, the prison, the, the yeah. streets, the life, the, the that. But yeah. now there's a whole nother thing. There's I only know, things. It's, it's there's getting porn. more and more common and more acceptable. And right. now it's like there's teachers doing it. There's lawyers oh. doing it. There, you know. Right. 
yeah. So I don't know. Uh, I really we we appreciate you getting on here. And just Especially we know you ain't real. feeling great. We know you ain't feeling well. We appreciate you pulling through. Oh yeah, pulling definitely. Through. Thank you. Yeah, thank thank you. Streets, you know. Um, and again, much respect. We appreciate Never. you. Thank you, you know, me. Of course, of course. You can always change your life. You can always do something different. You always have the opportunity. It's just up to you to create that opportunity and, and take advantage of whatever situation you're in or put yourself in. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We can all do it. We've all, yeah. everybody, everybody on the panel, including Plug, even though he's not on here right now, most people in these chats, we've all done it. We've all changed our life in some way. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's very similar to like that name being your your DOC number. So it's like you, you don't want it, but you keep it with you. Right. But as a lesson. But focus then, on like, what you're doing now, life. right? Yep, exactly. And, and if like, you want to give your change? channel a shout out or anything you're doing or anything, you've yep, got go ahead. You feel, give your shit a shout out, you know? Yeah, it's uh, Just Jen on YouTube, Just Jen's World on Instagram. Um, yeah, I'm just putting shit, up Jen. random shit randomly i don't i don't really keep up with a regular schedule or right. any type of certain content i have videos of me when i was pregnant doing crafts and stuff and you can see that i'm a wholesome normal person <laughs> right just living life human exactly much yeah. respect all For right sure. well i think we had a great you know first no one lot. first session at least Yes. And again, we appreciate you pulling up to the YouTube streets. Now, many got the courage to pull up and keep it a buck. So we fuck with you. For sure. Thank you, guys. Thank Definitely. you. I uh, found you through NJ Courts. So shout out NJ Courts. I wouldn't have never met you guys. It wasn't for Salute that. NJ Courts. Definitely. Yeah. 100%. And, 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 and hey, I hope you pursue. Yeah, and definitely. And I hope you pursue speaking out on the industry. You know what I mean? And, uh, yeah. You know, we all support you, you know what I mean? So hundred. Please that's keep right. doing what you're doing. It's a that's gonna be a rough a rough journey for for you just because people are gonna not positive people, but the negative people obviously are gonna give you a, a lot of hate. Yeah, and that's sad. You know that's what right. I mean? So yeah, exactly. Fuck them and keep on pushing. Keep your head up. Yeah, and salute you. Ronnie. Hey, my hey, guy. Hey, salute. Brother, I'll yes, talk sir. to you later. You Plug's know. on his dad time, so he'll be around. Yep. yep. Do your thing, Plug. We love you, brother. We got you. Much dog. love. It down. Yep. Hey, and thank you to the chat for showing up, pulling up. You guys He's know what time it is. You. Over Appreciate you. Definitely. You later. Thanks for coming to the YouTube streets where even you can come get in your feelings. Salute, everybody. Pull up. Pull up.